Hey everyone, this video is about the Casio FX 4500P from 1989 and Casio produced a number of great programmable scientific calculators over the 80s. There was of course the FX 602P from 1981 which is a competitor to the HP 41C uh, and also the elegant and powerful FX 4000P from the mid 80s, both of which I had separate videos on. Uh, but with the 4500p, Casio went in a slightly different direction, uh, as well as moving to this darker uh, aesthetic. It had a two-line display, uh, a new programming model using files, and also a simple uh, formula memory function. And as we'll see, some of the changes were successful, um, others not so much. This particular variant is the lower power, uh, PA model. It has the same functions as the original 4500P uh, but takes a different battery and is very slightly slower. Physically the 4500P has the same compact form factor as early 80s Casio calculators. It has a plastic body with an aluminum backplate. Uh, and it has an interesting hybrid display uh, that displays two rows of text. So the top row of characters uses a dot matrix uh, with 5x7 pixel alphanumerics and the bottom row is a 7 segment LCD that can display 10 digits plus a 2 digit mantissa. And like many Casio calculators, underneath the screen is a reference table uh, to the many modes that the calculator supports. And the keyboard is very complex. Uh, there are two shift keys, a yellow and a green, and also an, an alpha key. So each key on the keyboard has three or four functions, uh, but the labels are very hard to read, especially in the gray section of the keyboard. Uh, the symbols are tiny and there's just not enough contrast between the labels and the background and for me this is really a significant problem. Not sure to what degree the labels on this particular device have faded over time, uh, but I've read other people online talking about the same issue. Anyway, the keypad has the usual uh, Casio mode key, uh, an answer key and an execute key. Uh, there are four arrow keys. Uh, and also three keys, uh, file, out, and calc, that are related to new functionality, which I'll talk through later. Uh, if we turn the calculator over, uh, we can see that this particular 4500 PA uh, was made in uh, China. Um, so some others are made in Japan. Uh, there's also a reset button. Uh, and you have to take out two screws and on the aluminum backplate uh, to access the battery, so I'll do that now. So here you can see the CR2032 battery. I believe the original 4500P used a CR2025. Uh, there's also a compartment for a backup battery. Uh, and you can take out these seven screws uh, to access the internal, so we'll do that now. As you can see, the internals look fairly modern. Uh, there's an epoxy covered system on a chip. I believe it's a Toshiba T9977. It has enough RAM to store 1003 program steps. Uh, there's also this uh, heat sealed flex ribbon connection for the display. And as I mentioned, this uh, 4000PA uses one CR2032 for backup and one CR203 uh, that can last for 5,000 operating hours. So like most Casio calculators, the 4500P is highly modal. Uh, mode 0 switches to comp mode, which is the regular mode you do calculations in. So here we can type in an equation and uh, view it on the top line and hit EXE to see the answer on the bottom. Uh, and we can use the left arrow to edit the previous expression. And you can see that the line will scroll as needed. Uh, like other Casio calculators, you can refer to the previous answer using the answer key. And functions that take a single argument, like sign, uh, you enter a prefix. And some functions that take two arguments, like combinations, uh, you enter in, uh, infix. So let's say 20 pick 4. Uh, but there are some functions like polar and rectangular uh, that you enter basic style. So 
rectangular the 4500p also supports fractions so uh, you enter them with a fraction button so that's one and two thirds <coughs> and let's multiply that by two so that's uh, three and a third uh, and the 4500p doesn't support complex numbers or vectors and matrices, uh, but it does support numbers in different bases. So mode 1 is base n mode, uh, and we can switch bases using these four keys, and the base is displayed on the right. Uh, so we're in hex mode, uh, and we can enter a calculation, say DOTO times 2. Uh, and in base n mode we can override the default base uh, with a small base character so uh, to enter 100 decimal uh, we can hit shift square root to get uh, little d and then 100 uh, and so that's 6 4 in hex and the way that binary mode works is interesting uh, because it supports 32 bit numbers so we can switch to binary using the natural log key uh, and let's convert uh, 512 decimal to binary so again uh, shift square root 512 and uh, we can see this block view appear uh, so currently we're looking at the rightmost 8 bits uh, and we can hit the dot key uh, to move to the higher block and uh, shift dot to move back down again. It's a bit like the WP34S. Uh, uh, and if we hit minus one, uh, we can see that it supports negative numbers with uh, two's complement. There are also the usual bitwise operations like and and or. So say to enter. Uh, 0 or 1 and 1, uh, we can enter shift uh, plus to do an or and shift times to do an and. And the 4500p is a simple but useful formula memory so if I hit out you can see that I've entered my favorite full distance equation. Uh, so to evaluate the formula we can hit calc and we get prompted uh, for the right hand side variable so let's enter uh, t equals 5 seconds uh, and so the object falls 120 meters and this feature is quite useful but it's limited since you can only store a single formula and with programming Casio made some changes from the 4000p the biggest change was the introduction of a simple file system for storing programs and data uh, previously programs were stored in 10 numbered program spaces and so to create a program uh, we can enter write mode via mode exponent uh, and we get prompted for a file name uh, but I've already created a file uh, to calculate the error of a circle so I'll just select that with the file key uh, and then I can hit the down arrow to see uh, the one uh, and only line of the program. Uh, and you can see the bottom line of the display displays the file number and the line number. And so area equals pi r squared. And by default the 4500p, uh, when it encounters undeclared variables, it will prompt for them. Uh, and the left uh, slanted triangle means display the result so it's going to prompt for a radius r and display uh, the circle area and so to run the program we can exit out of write mode uh, using mode exponent again uh, and we can select the program with a file key and hit um, execute so uh, let's select a radius of 10 uh, and that's the circle area and so I've also entered this program to solve the N Queen's chess problem. And again, you can use the file key uh, to select the program and the cursor arrows uh, to view the source code. 
And uh, Casio made some odd changes to its programming language in uh, the 4500p. Uh, there's a new fix m command, and this turns off that automated uh, prompting for undeclared variables. Uh, they also change the variable assignment syntax. So instead of using a right arrow uh, to assign, you now use the equals uh, uh, character. Um, Casio also dropped the handy increment or decrement and test functions from previous models. <clears throat> and so this version of nQueens only has n uh, set to 4, and uh, we'll run it now. And for some reason the 4500p went backwards in speed compared to uh, the 4000p. For 8 queens, the 4500p takes a whopping 20 minutes, which is approximately four times slower than the 4000. And even for 4 queens, uh, it takes about 17 seconds to find a solution. Uh, so that's queens on rows uh, 3, 1, 4, and 2, uh, which sounds correct. Uh, one nice feature Casio did add in the uh, 4500p is that you can call files as subroutines from a main routine uh, and this can make it easier to break up large programs. So in summary the 4500p was an improvement over its predecessors in some ways but inferior in others. Uh, the dual line display works fairly well. Uh, it has a powerful base end mode and the introduction of file names is great. Uh, but the dark faceplate is very difficult to read, it doesn't support complex numbers and has a version of Casio Basic that's quite quirky. Uh, but with its two shift keys plus an alpha key, uh, the 4500p was really at the limit of functionality that could be directly accessed from the keyboard. And so it's not a surprise that in following models uh, Casio moved to more of a menu driven uh, UI, so uh, with the 4800p uh, it supported a bunch of separate applications through menus and uh, this formula programmable um, FX uh, 550L supported menu driven vector and matrix operations. Uh, there was also, also of course the FX 603P, uh, the direct successor to the 602P which also adopted the uh, dark colour scheme but managed to avoid some of the pitfalls from the 4500P. And interestingly the changes made to the programming language uh, did persevere through uh, the 4800p but were later rolled back in the 5800p which I have a separate video on. Uh, but overall the uh, Casio 4500p is quite a powerful calculator in a very compact form factor and if you can actually read the keyboard uh, it can make for quite a handy device. And so um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.